Caduceus Clay, Taliesin's character in Campaign 2 of Critical Role, was one of the best examples I've seen of the heart of a story. Which I know sounds familiar because I said the same thing about Jester, but it's true. I think the two resemble two different halves of the same side of the story. Two people trying very hard to heal broken individuals, but by two totally different methods. And without the other, I don't think it ever would have worked. But together, they ended up being exactly what the group and the story needed. So let's talk about it. Yes, I've met a ghost that I didn't, didn't want to punch. Now before I continue, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor. And if you guys could hold on with me for one second, this sponsor is very near and dear to me. Evan, otherwise known as Monkey DM, is working on a Kickstarter of an incredible product. And Monkey DM was one of the first people to ever help me out with my channel. I reached out to him, we talked about YouTube, and we've kept in contact ever since. And I want to do everything that I can to help him out with this, because I think it is an amazing product. Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt is an incredible module that will give a full encompassing view of monsters, subclasses, different abilities, and new items for anybody who cares about Soulsborne-like environments as well as Eldritch Horror. And as somebody who uses it a ton in my games, I could not be more excited for this product. It's supposed to have a ton of new monster options, new race options, and amazing environments as well as four fully fleshed out adventures. Not only that, it's going to have a new school of magic called Osteomancy, which is the act of magic where you can use bones to impale and use as weapons, which God, that sounds so cool. I really want to give Monkey my support behind this, as well as the whole team behind this entire book. So please go support the Kickstarter and give them all your love and let them know that play. Right off the bat, Caduceus spoke to me. His almost pastor kid-like backstory was something I was familiar with, but most importantly, he was just a kind soul in a very unkind world. And watching him perform a very subtle, masterful character arc that happened in the background was honestly something that I really enjoyed watching. Many times we focus on the big bombastic moments in a story, the moments where character arcs are the forefront and everybody watches them. A calmness comes across you. What do you do? I'll pull the blade back and throw it. But Caduceus happened very subtly, and yet very powerfully, and because of his character arc, it affected all of the other character arcs around him, including Jester's. And I really want to thank Taliesin for the incredible story that he crafted. Caduceus was a very kind soul. He was somebody who had grown up incredibly sheltered, in a grove that nobody ever went to, and he essentially only ever saw people when they came to bury their dead. He didn't get to interact with people much, but Early on, his parents instilled with him a very strong moral compass to be kind and respectful to other people, and more importantly, to make sure that they are taken care of. He worshipped the Wild Mother, the goddess of nature, and as such, it was very important to him that everything was allowed to grow as it was supposed to grow. And I think that's the heart of what Caduceus' story was. He was supposed to help everybody grow how they were supposed to, without all the weeds, without all the nonsense, without the grossness around him. He was just there to help them become that. I, th I think if we run, that's how you end up in prison. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to raise my voice. <laughs> what did I walk into? <laughs> am I the only? Am I the only person here who doesn't Caduceus instantly assume that they're, that they're really the bad guy? It. Honestly, I always loved the gardening metaphor for Caduceus, and I think it went almost shockingly under the radar. Yes, he grew up in a garden in a grove and he took care of it well, but he did the same thing to his teammates. He made sure to let them grow, but he worked to take out the weeds and the different parts of them that needed to be pruned off. And while yes, I think there is a little bit of a problematic mindset in his thought process of treating everybody like a project, which he did, as Taliesin admits, I still think it was something that was incredibly interesting to watch. When they came to him, he spoke to them in a kind fashion and didn't tell them what to do, but instead asked them questions that caused them to reflect upon themselves. He truly was, at the end of the day, a caretaker. And an angry one at that. I think it's amazing how little people realize how angry Caduceus was. He was a kind soul, a calm soul, but underneath was a burning anger for the horrible things that he was noticing in the world. 12, 14 points of uh, radiant damage. 14 points of radiant damage. damage? Yeah, he, he mm -hmm. went through the blade barrier, okay. so. Oh, that's what that did. Yeah. 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 
So it, it doesn't off. even tag it. It goes, it turns towards Jester, and as it does, the beetles just swarm over it. You hear the and then as the beetles scatter away, you just see like the dull bones beneath that are kind of bent, you know, yeah, cartilage-like. Yeah. Just... I like the beetles. Like a oh, yeah. He was incredibly sheltered from the world. He had been in that grove his whole life and had basically never been outside of it. And so once he did so, the things that he began to see made him angry that the world could be this unjust, this indecent to people who he truly saw as decent people. And that is why I think Jester and Caduceus created a perfect yin and yang for creating a heart of a story. See, Jester only saw the good in people. It was all she ever saw. She couldn't see past the good in them, even when it was detrimental to herself. Caduceus, on the other hand, saw the horrible things inside people and recognized them as things that didn't belong there. While Jester saw the good, he saw the evil and recognized that that evil had happened because of an unjust world, not because they were a bad person. And he did this with everyone, even with Trent Ickathon. Yeah, I say before you go, uh, I think perhaps you were one of the most powerful mages that I've ever had the pleasure to be in the presence of. And for this, I, I would offer a gift, which I think it has been a long time since anyone has pointed out to you that you are a fool. Pain doesn't make people. It's love that makes people. The pain is inconsequential. It's love that saves them. And you would know that, but you have none around you. You said so yourself. You surround yourself with lies and deceptions. And I wish for you in the future to find someone who will mourn you when you were gone. Respectfully. Which I will remind you, he caused Caleb to kill his own family. And yet Caduceus still saw the evil in him as something which wasn't supposed to be there. It was inordinary, irrational. His devotion to the Wild Mother caused him to see the natural world as beautiful, but in need of correcting. Not because he was the ultimate source of good, but because he recognized that those terrible things didn't deserve to happen to beautiful things. They needed to be kept separate. And that was his core mission in life. And I think that that was beautiful and incredibly well handled. Over the course of the story, he works with Ford, with Yasha, with Nod. He continues to see the issues that they have. Yasha's insistence on isolating herself. Ford's insistence about lying about who he is and Nod's insistence on relying on alcohol instead of being comfortable with who she was. He continued to work to help them realize that those were just crutches to help them be things that they could be by themselves, that they could feel comfortable just being themselves. But this is where that subtle character arc I was talking about comes in. And I honestly just want to applaud Towson for feeling comfortable keeping it so in the background. While he was trying so hard to help everybody else realize this, Caduceus realized that he himself had his own issues that he needed to work through. And he continued to self-reflect. He began to question his faith. He questioned why all these terrible things were happening, why such an unjust world would be allowed. He continued to ask the Wild Mother these things and continued to look across at everything and wondering why is there was so much evil and if he was capable of taking it all on. But over the course of time, if you notice, Caduceus stopped trying so hard to fix everybody and instead started trying to help them realize how they could take care of themselves. And here's the beautiful analogy that I know was not planned but I think is incredible. As Taliesin worked to make sure that Caduceus helped all of his friends realize this, realizing that he could leave his friends alone to blossom and nourish themselves, to grow into who they were, and he didn't have to be there micromanaging them and guarding them. The way that he realized this was he chose to leave the garden, to let it grow by itself, to no longer tend to it, much like he did not have to tend to his friends, and it still come back and see the beauty, see the incredibleness of it all, and know that it was going to be beautiful and that it was being taken care of by who it needed to be taken care of. Much the same as his friends. Really, I think it's incredible how Caduceus was a very strong case of a character arc that didn't have a confrontation. It didn't need one. It was subtle and in the background, but Caduceus didn't confront things as most D&D backstories go. Instead, what he did was he self-reflected, came to terms with it, and learned how to live with it. And that is a very important lesson that I think all of us could take away. In our lives, we all have issues, we all have problems, and most of them can't actually be removed. We can't go and slay a dragon and remove it from our lives 
the harm and the trauma that we receive remains with us. And Caduceus was traumatized. He went out into the world and immediately received a horrible dose of reality, which caused him to reevaluate his entire worldview. Oh, no. uh, I'm swimming full speed uh, out They're directly out into the ocean. <laughs> it's, it's, it's half movement in the water. <laughs> He's never seen the ocean before. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not having a good, this, so is, brave. this is not going well for me. But at the end of the day, what ended up happening? He came to terms with it. He learned to accept it and he learned how to live with it and let it teach him a lesson. That's something that all of us can do. Our trauma does not go away. Our wounds can heal, but they leave scars. We can't remove them. We can't go slay the dragon. But what we can do is come to terms with them and learn how to live with them. I think Jester was an incredible side of the coin that showed everybody that there was good in everybody that she would not see past. But I think that it was incredible that Caduceus was willing to see past everybody's goodness, to see the horrible things in them that needed to be taken care of, to help them look inside themselves at the things that they were afraid of seeing, Caleb afraid of his trauma, but finally seeing inside it and confronting it. No, they wouldn't get rid of it. No, they didn't get to go just slay it and it was gone but they learned to continue to live alongside it. And that was okay. And I think that was amazing for Caduceus to first come to that realization and help the rest of the group do so. And I think it is why he was a perfect addition to the party and an incredible addition to the story. And he's not the only one. If you wanna hear about Jester's side of things, I have a video right here where I talk about it and it's one of my favorite ones that I've ever done. So go out into the world and make it your own.